Welcome to this technical guide video on Halo 96 PQR and Luminesc 96 PQR and how to measure potency of hematopoietic and mesenchymal stem cell therapy products. This is actually the last technical guide on cell potency. In this guide I shall be using umbilical cord blood to demonstrate how stem cell potency is measured using the Halo 96 PQR assay kit. But the same concepts and principles apply to mesenchymal stem cells using the Luminesc 96 PQR assay kit. Umbilical cord blood was the first cell therapeutic product to be designated as a drug by the FDA and as such the potency of cord blood unit products has to be determined prior to use. Although the FDA guidelines for potency on cell and gene therapy products was published in January 2011, the FDA potency recommendations for minimally manipulated core blood appear to directly contradict the regulations for potency assays. So let's take a look first at the recommended tests and assays used for core blood purity, identity and potency. There are four of them total nucleated cell count, viability, flow cytometry, and colony forming assays. Now a problem with total nucleated cell count is that it includes dead and contaminating cells that play no role in the intended response of engraftment and actually dilute the active stem cell components. So a remedy for this would be to use the mononucleated cell count instead of the TNC count. Viability measures, or di-exclusion viability, measures membrane integrity, but not cellular and mitochondrial integrity. This can result in false positives. Cells may exhibit greater than 90% viability by di-exclusion methods, but are metabolically dead. So a remedy for this would be to include a metabolic viability assay. Flow cytometry markers do not measure specific active stem cell component biological properties in a quantitative and validated manner. In addition, the identity is often ambiguous. However, flow cytometry can be included as a supplemental assay to validated stem cell proliferation assays. And the core blood for, and the uh, colony forming assays have been functional assays or used for functional assays for years, but, but they're subjective, they lack standards and controls, and cannot be validated. The CFU assay is primarily used to test for time to engraftment. However, a remedy for this would be to replace the CFU assay with standardized and validated stem cell proliferation assays that include the required reference standards and other standards and controls. Identifying, characterizing and measuring the active components is a requirement for a potency assay. All of the properties associated with stem cells, for example self-renewal, primitiveness, quiescence and engraftment potential are all associated with the process of cell proliferation. The more primitive a stem cell, the greater its self-renewal capacity, proliferation potential, engraftment potential and potency. All of these properties are intimately linked with each other. Individual stem cell populations are identified by their ability to be stimulated and respond to specific cocktails of growth factors. Combining identification with the stem cell property of proliferation that can be measured using a highly sensitive quantitative and validated ATP bioluminescence assay and you have the makings of a stem cell potency assay for hematopoietic cell therapy products. Cell potency is measured from a cell dose response. The diagram opposite shows the cell dose response curves for seven different hematopoietic populations and a background shown in black at the bottom. The lowest cluster of response curves are for the lymphopoietic cells. The middle cluster is for the hematopoietic progenitor cells. The upper cluster for stem cells. The slope of the dose response curve is the, me is the measure of proliferation potential. 
The greater the proliferation potential, the more primitive the cell and the greater its potency. The highest proliferation potential or potency is shown by the stem cells and primitive stem cells have a greater potency than more mature stem cells. Now include a reference standard and you have a potency assay. So let's see how a stem cell potency assay is actually performed. Well first you need to remove core blood reference standard aliquot and the core blood sample or samples from storage in a liquid nitrogen container. Thaw each vial of cells in a 37 degrees Celsius water bath and prepare the samples using your usual protocol. The assay kit should have been stored at minus 20 degrees Celsius after inspecting the contents and removing the documents from the box. Although a four, although a four plate Halo 96 PQR kit is shown in the picture, we shall be performing a potency assay for a single core blood sample. For this you will need a single individually wrapped 96 well plate, a bottle of medium, a bottle of the HPP SP Master Mix and a bottle of the CFC GEMM Master Mix. Everything else can remain in the box and stored again. We've already thawed and prepared the core blood reference standard and sample core blood cells. It was not necessary to remove red blood cells in this case because the concentration was below 10%. If the red blood cell count had been greater, they would have, uh, they would have had to have been removed since they, in, since they interfere with the assay causing false positive results. The cells from both have been counted and the viability determined. The viability of both the reference standard and the sample was greater than 85%. If this had been lower, the cells would not have been able to sustain proliferation. From the mononuclear cell count the cell concentration has been adjusted and the serial cell dilutions prepared for both the reference standard and core blood sample. The cell dilutions were 750,000, 500,000 and 250,000 cells per milliliter but only 0.5 milliliters of each dilution was actually prepared. Besides preparing the six tubes for the three cell dilutions for the three reference standard and three um, dose concentrations for the sample, we've also prepared the tubes for setting up the cultures. For a reference standard and a single sample to be tested, you will need two sets of six by five milliliter sterile tubes. The tubes have been labeled to distinguish between the reference standard and the core blood sample as well as the two stem cell populations to be measured. As mentioned previously, the two, sample, uh, the two stem cell populations are HPPSP, which is a primitive lymphohematopoietic stem cell population, and the CFCGEMM, which is a primitive hematopoietic stem cell population. The bottles of master mix reagents have been thawed and the contents mixed gently by inversion. The tubes for the reference standard and, and cord blood sample have been separated to avoid any dispensing mishaps and, can now, and we can now begin with dispensing the different master mixes. We'll start by dispensing 0.9 milliliters of the CFC GEM master mix into the reference standard and core blood sample tubes. All HALO master mixes, regardless of the assay kit being used, incorporate suspension expansion culture technology, allowing normal pipettes uh, to be used for the purpose. HALO does not, in, uh, does not use methyl cellulose. All dispensing procedures should be performed with, a calibrated, uh, with calibrated pipettes. At Hemogenics we always recommend using electronic pipettes which are self-calibrating every time they're used. Both Halo 96 PQR master mixes for CFC GEMM and HPP SP stem cell stimulation have now been dispensed into the tubes. 
we're now ready to dispense the different cell concentrations into the respective tubes. Starting with the lowest cell concentration of 250,000 cells per milliliter, 0.1 milliliters of the reference standard cell suspension is dispensed into one tube containing the HPP, SP and CFC GEMM master mixes. This is followed by dispensing 0.1 milliliters from the 500,000 and 750,000 cell per milliliter tubes into the respective HPP, SP and CFC GEMM reference standard tubes. The core blood samples are dispensed in the same manner. Each tube is capped tightly and mixed on a vortex mixer. Each of the working cell concentrations has now been diluted tenfold. Starting with the lowest reference standard cell concentration for HPPSP, 0.1 milliliters from the total volume of 1 milliliter in each tube is dispensed into 8 replicate wells in columns of the 96 well plate. The first 6 columns of the plate will contain the 2 cell dose, dose responses for the reference standard uh, stem cell populations. The remaining 6 columns will be used for the core blood sample. Transfer the plate to a fully humidified incubator at 37 degrees Celsius in an atmosphere containing 5% carbon dioxide and preferably 5% oxygen. The cells can be incubated for 5, 6 or 7 days depending on your schedule. Compared to 5 days of incubation, leaving the cells for 7 days will result in a greater than 3-fold increase in ATP concentration and therefore increased assay sensitivity, but with slightly higher coefficients of variation or CVs. Please note, however, that using a 7-day incubation period will also result in lower potency ratios. This will be discussed later. Now let's take a look at some of the results using HALO 96 PQR. From the stem cell dose response, responses performed using HALO 96 PQR on a core blood reference standard and sample, all of the information required to release the product is obtained. For each 3 point cell dose response performed, the slope of the linear regression is calculated. This measures the proliferation potential and therefore the primitiveness of each stem cell population in the reference standard and sample. The greater the slope, the more primitive the, the cell population. Since the HPPSP is more primitive than the CFC GEMM, it would be expected that the slope of the HPPSP for both the reference standard <coughs> excuse me and sample be greater than that for CFCGEMM. That expectation is realized. The HPPSP in blue produce a steeper slope than the CFCGEMM in red. The potency ratio is determined from the slope of the sample for each stem cell population divided by the slope of that for the reference standard. The potency ratio of CFC GEMM is 2.93, while that for the HPPSP population is 1.95. The potency of the reference standard is always 1. Therefore, the potency of HPPSP and CFC GEMM for the sample far exceeds that for the reference standard and conforms to the first release criterion namely that the potency ratio for both stem cell populations must be similar or greater than that of the reference standard. The second release criterion concerns stem cell potency or proliferation ability which is measured at a specific cell dose in this case 500,000 cells per well. The horizontal black line represents the ATP concentration at 0.04 micromolar. This is the level above which cells can sustain proliferation. 
Since the stem cells for both the reference standard and the sample exhibit an ATP concentration greater than that uh, for 0 0.04 micromolar, the second criterion for release has been fulfilled. So the release criteria for a, for a hematopoietic stem cell therapy product prior to use are 1. The proliferation potential or quality of the stem cell population must be greater than 0.04 micromolar ATP for the cells to sustain proliferation. And 2 the potency ratio calculated from the slope of the sample cell dose response divided by the slope of the reference standard cell dose response should be similar or greater than the potency of the reference standard for which the potency is always one. Now here's another example. In this case the core blood sample had or exhibited a lower potency. The reference standards for both stem cell populations are greater than that of the sample, with a potency ratio of 0.55 for the CFC GEMM and 0.35 for the HPP SP populations. In addition, the stem cell quality for CFC GEMM is a little bit greater than the acceptance limit of 0.04 for micromolar. This situation is problematic. If the cultures were left for seven days rather than five days, the proliferation ability or quality would increase. But the potency ratios for both cell populations would actually decrease. This is because many stem cells will enter hematopoietic lineages and the cells will begin differentiating. When this happens, the potency ratio dramatically decreases. In effect, the sample is losing proliferating stem cells for differentiating cells. Because both stem cell potency and quality are low, release of this sample for use would be very problematic and the expectation for engraftment would be rather low. Now you might ask what is the relationship between stem cell potency and quality and presently recommended tests and assays? The answer to this is that there is no correlation either on a concentration or a patient weight basis with viability, CD34 cells, time to neutrophil engraftment, granocyte macrophage progenitors or time to platelet engraftment. However, there is a direct correlation, but only on a, on a per patient weight basis with both total nucleated cell count and mononuclear cell, a mononuclear cell count. The correlation with MNC, mononuclear cell count, per kilogram body weight is far greater than that for, for the TNC or total nucleated cell count because TNC contain dead and contaminating cells that do not contribute to the intended response, namely engraftment, and also dilute the stem cells in the product. This correlation would be expected since the larger the number of MNC or TNC given to the patient, the greater the number of stem cells transplanted and the higher the probability of engraftment. For more information on measuring potency, please see these two articles that can be downloaded through our website at www.hemogenics.com. In addition, there is a considerable amount of information on our website, including several white papers on potency. Measuring potency of a stem cell product is not difficult if the concepts and principles are understood and the right assay is used. The potency for mesenchymal stem cells is performed in exactly the same manner using Luminesc 96 PQR. So this concludes the technical guide videos on potency. I hope they've been very helpful to you. Please contact us with any questions and thanks for your attention.